Hello everybody, welcome to my review of episodes 7 and 8 of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. These episodes were very revealing, but at the same time, they they felt like fillers once again. Um, we had that May episode where we learned more about May. Kind of boring. I don't really care about her character. Um, but at the end of that episode was was the best part. We got Lee um, bombing the area where the frost spark is i think that's the hollow earth entry like one of the hollow earth portals on earth and um we also got the revelation like the backstory sort of of apex cybernetics and in episode eight we revealed that the randa family is actually not the randa family so basically kate is not part of the randa family and kentaro as well they're not they're not part of the randa family so that's a crazy revelation so overall these episodes are they they were okay i mean we could have seen more monster action i feel like in episode eight at the end when we had the i think it's called it was endo something i, f I forgot what it was it was like a mutated version of the endo swarmers um and at the end it didn't have a lot of screen time but it was really crazy may died at the end of episode eight spoiler alert i don't know why i gave the spoiler alert after i said that but oh well may died so that's nice who really cared about her character um but kentaro from the description of episode 9 kentaro is gonna be struggling with the loss of may and i don't really understand that because kentaro didn't really care about may in this series um uh, apart from episodes like of four i guess other than that you don't really care about may so i don't know why he's struggling with the lost loss of may and kate is of course gonna be struggling with the loss of may I actually wasn't expecting May to die, so there's a surprise. But who really cares about her character? Um, Lee, we're gonna, we learn more about uh, like how the Hollow Earth theory, like how, where the Hollow Earth, Hollow Earth theory formed from. And basically, Lee, Billy, no, not Lee, but Billy and Keiko uh, make this map, and then an ant crawls through a hole in the map. And that's where the Hollow Earth theory comes from. That's really that's a really clever way of, you know, the formation of the Hollow Earth theory. That was really clever. So yeah, other than that, not not much else was shown in these episodes. Um, yeah, I can't really, can't really think of anything. Lee's on a journey to uh, seal up the Hollow Earth entries. So we can prevent titans from, um, from of course, getting up to Earth and destroying cities and stuff. So, yeah, that's Lee's sort of mission. Of course, with Duval as well. And um, we got Kate following Lee and all everybody else as well. You know, following Lee. So, yeah, that's my review for Monarch Legacy of Monsters episodes 7 and 8. I know it's been a while since I did a Monarch Legacy of Monsters video. So, I kind of wanted to do this quick little review of those two episodes. Um, uh, are you guys enjoying this show so far? Because I'm not really enjoying it that much anymore. But it's still really good though. I like the revelations at the end of these episodes. They're really nice. And I cannot wait for episode 9. I think that's the episode where we're going to see Godzilla vs. the Ion Dragon. Um, I wonder what we're going to see in episode 10. So, who knows? There's two more episodes to come. And then we got season 2 coming out in either late 2024 or early 2025. So, that's exciting. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So, um, make sure to subscribe for more MonsterVerse content, more Kaiju content. And I'll see you in the next video. So, bye.